Today, I am excited to bring to you all the highly anticipated fourth installment of the Method Behind the Madness series, How We One-Shot Razorback. I know, you guys waited a little longer than you would have liked for this video, but let me assure you, it was worth it. I appreciate all the support and positive feedback for the series, and just want to take a moment to thank you guys, as it has been super awesome seeing others use these guides to pull off these strategies. We are close to 2,000 subscribers, so if you have not subbed already, please consider doing so, as it really does help the channel grow. With all that said, I'm going to let the clip run, and then I'll get right into the breakdown of the method behind the madness. I'm here. Moving. Moving. Get that little bit of a pre-damage, get that front open. Front. Pulse. Ready. Go. Yes! <laughs> to begin, let's take a look at the room layout. On plate 1, we have a striker DPS and a Sawyer's piercer as ad clear. As a side note, a piercer is a player that will be shooting Razorback and over damaging his health by piercing the front and back panel. On plate 2, we have a hardwired skill build and a striker DPS as ad clear. On plate 3, we have a yellow true patriot DPS build and a hollow man piercer as ad clear. And lastly, on plate 4, we have Red Future Initiative DPS and a Sawyer's Piercer as ad clear. First, I'll go over each plate's build and roll. Then, I'll move on to what the Striker DPS ad clear roll consists of and end up with what each Piercer does. Starting with plate 1, this player will be running the build shown here, running an ACS 12 to help stack his Strikers almost instantly, and a Ravenous in order to break his weak point solo almost instantly. Utilizing Coyote's Mask long buff after Razorback's health is damageable, an Overlord Bag with Opportunistic to increase rifle damage and the Piercer's damage to Razorback, followed up with 4P Strikers to aid him in breaking his weak point solo as quickly as possible. Running Decoy and Foam for his skills in order to keep the adds on his plate in optimal position for the Piercer. As shown in Lunar's footage here, he is using his Shotgun to stack Strikers very quickly, using less than one mag to stack them to max. Once he has done so, he makes use of his foam and decoy to aid his piercer in killing his adds as the adds do need to die at a certain time. Once each plate is charged, this player is responsible for using his demo rounds in the vent as this completes the requirements faster than throwing a grenade. Once Razorback opens, he switches to his Ravenous using a blue buff to deal massive amounts of damage to the weak point paired with striker stacks to break it very quickly. He then promptly runs away in order to proc Coyote's long buff as well as opportunistic with his shotgun while pre-damaging the front. Once the shot has been taken, he heads towards turret 1 to destroy its console. On to plate 2, this player will be running the build shown here, running the test subject and Scorpio, utilizing Coyote's mask for close buff, a wyvern chest for an increase in skill damage with overwatch to apply more damage for the team, and running a 4 piece hardwired set in order to make use of his EMP pulse multiple times running a Healing Hive and EMP Pulse as his skills. As shown in Bizkit's footage, once the plate is charged, he uses his crossbow to open up the vent instantly using an EMP Pulse to destroy the first wave of drones. After, he drops his Hive and picks it up again in order to refresh his EMP cooldown and promptly uses his EMP Pulse again on the second and final wave of drones. Once he clears both drone waves, he swaps to his Scorpio and procs a 7-shot buff onto Razorback providing an additional damage buff to the team, as well as proccing the close Coyote buff. Keep in mind, this player is also running Overwatch, therefore he stays on the generator within his circle to provide the buff. For plate 3, this player will be running the build shown here, running a hybrid yellow true patriot build. Yes, disgusting, I know. This player runs a Ravenous and a card pistol as the main weapons, with the shotgun being meaningless to this build. Running a 4 piece True Patriot rolled to skill tier and crit chance and crit damage, using an Acosta's Go Bag and the Sacrifice Chest Piece rolled with weapon damage to get the most DPS out of the build. As you can see, this build does not have 6 skill tiers to reach overcharge with the Go Bag, which is where the pistol comes into play. When holding this pistol, you gain the final skill tier you need to use the overcharge feature. This player's skills are Foam and a Normal Pulse. As shown in my footage, I start off by foaming the adds for the piercer, and then begin stacking ravenous blue buff to help keep me alive while I wait for the plates to charge. 
Once the plates are charged, I use my demo nades in place of a grenade to open up Razorback. Once his weak points are exposed, I begin stacking my Ravenous, making use of the blue stacks to deal as much damage as possible while I wait for the ad clear player from plate 2 to help me finish it off. Once my weak point is broken, I swap to my pistol, which is very important, for the 6th skill tier and throw my grenade to proc Acostas. Once enough pre-damage has come through, I use my overcharge pulse to provide the damage increase for the team. On plate 4, we have an all red DPS future initiative player that should be running the build shown here. As you can see, this player will be also using the Ravenous, with his secondary and pistol being unused. This player will be running a 4 piece future initiative set all rolled with weapon damage and crit chance and crit damage. This is to gain the damage buff provided by FI. This player also runs a Grupo bag with Vigilance for increased crit damage and Fox's prayer knee pads for an increase in rifle damage. Using foam to help the piercer take out his adds, the second skill is up to the player as seen here he used Achilles to try and help the piercers with initial ad clear by landing a lucky Achilles pulse on the head for them to get their headhunter going sooner. As seen here in SSR's footage, he foams the adds to help the piercer handle them better and then gets his crossbow ready to break the vent. Once the vent is broken, this player needs to utilize Ravenous blue buff to solo break his weak point. Once Razorback's health has been exposed, he helps with some pre-damage, then promptly moving to turret 4 to destroy its console. Onto the striker DPS ad clear on plate 2. This player should be running the build shown here using a 4 piece strikers, the sacrifice, and the dodge city holster. All of these items are rolled with crit chance and crit damage. As you can see this player is also running a shotgun to help stack his strikers as well as ravenous and d50. The d50 is important here as it will allow him to one shot a weak point in the back and help the true patriot hybrid player break his as well. This player runs foam and a spotter drone to help with ad clear. As seen here in Lazy's footage, he begins by dealing with both adds at his plate right away. After he clears his adds, he stacks his strikers with his shotgun on Razorback and then switches to Ravenous to stack blue buff multiple times for the damage increase. Once Razorback has his weak points exposed, he takes out his d50 and one shots the first weak point on the right, promptly switching to the second weak point and finishing it off. After both weak points are broken, he's in charge of getting some pre-damage in the back. This is damage that will come through before the sniper shots, essentially weakening his health for them. Make sure you do not reach 25% of his health in pre-damage or Razorback will close early as his max damage threshold was met. Once the shot is taken, he heads back to turret on 2 and takes out the console once it spawns. Now, before we get into the piercer's role, it is important to understand what is really going on here and how the whole strategy works. As you can see here from the side, the health point in the front and the back are slightly offset vertically. This is why the angle and position of the snipers is so crucial. As you can see, the whole goal of this strategy is to hit them both with attack 50. This is possible as attack 50 can pierce through targets dealing damage to anything the bullet hits. This allows for at the right angle, a shot that can connect onto the front and back health points of Razorback. This allows you to destroy both in one combined shot with enough damage. Now, in terms of where each player is positioned, this side view should help you as it shows where each piercer should stand and from what plate they came from, with piercer from plate 3 on the side, piercer from plate 4 on the front small cover, and piercer from plate 1 on the front tall cover. These positions are shown in each player perspective, so watch out for that when we get there. Now, we will take a look at what the piercer on plate 1 does. This player should be running the build shown here, running the nemesis and sharpshooter spec, using 4 piece tips specking into crit chance up to 35% and the rest into crit damage, running the chain killer for perfect headhunter and Sawyer's knee pads for the increase in damage. The skills used are a decoy or spotter drone, and foam to help with keeping his adds in place. As seen here in assist footage, this player's role is to kill both of his adds with attack 50 in order to maximize his headhunter damage onto Razorback. This player needs to kill his adds at certain times in order to maintain his stacks, so if they happen to stack in front of each other, then you need to use the nemesis to take out the first add to avoid killing both. This player should kill his first add right away and hold a second until Razorback begins to open up. This is to maintain his headhunter stacks for the sink shot. Take note that this player is using Sawyers and cannot move during this phase. In order to preserve his buff, once plate 1's weak point is broken, 
This player moves to the specific location to prep for the sync shot. This player needs to wait for the timing in order to use the 10 seconds of uptime after moving that Sawyers provides. Take note of the location at which this player is standing and where he shoots the weak point at, as this is crucial in order to hit both the front and back of Razorback's health. Once the shot is taken, this player returns to the turret on 1 and helps destroy the console there. As you can see, this player swaps his chest to the sacrifice to increase his damage onto the console. As you can see by shooting the console on the two buttons, you can actually hit the console two times with one shot, allowing for much better damage. As seen here in AJ's footage, this piercer on plate 4 takes the same approach as the piercer on plate 1, running the same build. This player should wait to move to position for when plate 4's weak point is nearly destroyed, taking out the position shown here. Keep in mind, each position is very important as it allows for the TAC-50 shot to be at the correct angle to hit the front and the back. As you can see, this player shoots here on the weak point in contrast to where the first piercer shoots. This is due to positioning and the angle he is at. Once the shot is taken, this player heads towards the turret at plate 4 and takes the same shot into the buttons on the side for double damage as shown here. The third piercer on plate 3 runs a slightly different build. This player runs essentially the same thing, except changes out his mask for Hollow Man and his knees to tips to preserve the four piece, as he has a much greater distance to travel before the shot is taken, not allowing him to run Sawyer's. As seen here in Red's footage, this piercer on plate 3 takes the same approach as the piercer on plate 1 and 4. However, he waits to kill his second ad until he hears Razorback sirens as he begins to open up. Then, he runs to the front and takes up the position shown here, which allows him a similar angle as the other two piercers. As you can see, he lines up his shot in this location for the pierce shot. Once the shot is taken, he heads back to plate 3 and prepares to take out the console, shooting the same buttons for the extra damage as the others. Now, for such a shot to come through, it is not as easy as, okay, let's all just shoot together. It has to be frame perfect. Each piercer has to sync his shot perfectly with the others in order for this to be successful, as two out of the three hitting will result in leaving Razorback with less than 30% health. All three are required to hit with one of the three hopefully landing a crit. It is important to understand that this is not easy. It requires finding the three most synced players in your team. We have found the best way to test this as standing at the beach before we begin, practicing and having a ready go count in order for them to shoot with their pistols to try and get them as synced up as possible. This will not work every time. As I said, it has to be quite literally frame perfect for when the shot comes through, for Razorback to take the damage from all three players. One player slightly early or late will cause Razorback to close early and not be taken out in one shot. As you can hear in this clip, SSR is the man that times out the shot. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Go. My God. Lazy. No lazy. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Go. Oh, Ready? Re <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Go. I think this was early there. La AJ, you were late. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. It's weird. Red and AJ are synced in this instead of assist in red. I'm seeing assist a touch early and AJ a touch late. I'm here. Moving. Moving. Get a little bit of a pre damage. Get that front open. Front. Pulsed. Ready? Go. Yes! With all that covered, this concludes the fourth and final episode of the Method Behind the Madness series. I hope you all have enjoyed the series as much as I have, and hope to see some clips of one-shotting Razorback start popping up here and there. Maybe even see some new teams start speedrunning Dark Hours with these strategies. After all, our sum of all bests is close to sub 8 minutes, and our current time is 8 minutes and 34 seconds. As always, thank you for watching, and make sure to leave a like if this video helped you, and leave any questions you have in the comments. Yes! Oh,